this concept of RLHF because it's probably something um, that not most people do yet. And I think this might be something that um, if we look at current um, open source models with um, some exceptions, what most people could do to their models to get even better performance out of their, let's say, open source models. So how this works is it's also a three-step process. So first, um, we start with um, sampling a prompt, so, you know, like an instruction, and then we have the humans writing the responses, so we are generating this data set. And this is usually time and labor intensive because we have to have people to write these responses, so it's usually not uh, super trivial, but let's say we, we yeah, did this and we have a data set for that. We then do the supervised fine-tuning that I explained earlier and get a model from there. And then as the next step, we use this fine-tuned model, sample more prompts, and then we have humans uh, rate these responses um, or rank them, essentially, like from um, one, two, three, four. We, we basically have multiple responses, let's say four responses, and we rank them from worst to best. And these uh, uh, rankings are then our labels. So it's another uh, time and labor intensive step. But I would say it's a bit easier than writing a response because like rearranging the order of what is the worst, what's the best is slightly, I would say, easier than writing this response in the first place. So it's still time and labor intensive, but maybe less so as the previous step. Um, yeah, and then once we have that um, data set, this ranking uh, or the ranked responses, we can train a reward model. The reward model is essentially also a LLM, and often it's the same LLM that we used for the pre-training. So if we pre-trained a GPT-3 model, we fine-tuned this uh, GPT-3 model, then this reward model would be another fine-tuned GPT-3 model usually. You can pick any model, but you know that's just how it's typically done for simplicity. So we have now uh, two models. We have a supervised uh, fine-tuned model and we have this reward model here. So there's one more step and that is using these two models. So it looks maybe a bit complicated, but essentially what we are doing here is we are now refining the supervised fine-tuned model using this reward model to provide new, let's say, rewards for new data points. So we have the supervised fine-tuned model, sample responses, have the reward model give it a score, how good is the response, and then update this model using uh, something called proximal policy optimization, which is a, a certain form of reinforcement learning. So it's essentially improving the supervised fine-tuning model, going from the previous um, supervised fine-tuning to the alignment step, essentially. And once we have done that, so then we get something like ChatGPT, where we can then ask it questions and it gives us pretty good responses. Um, okay, so this was essentially a lengthy, um, you know, introduction to LLMs and how we define the term LLM. So I think when, yeah, most people think of LLMs, uh, these are the three stages that we usually associate with LLMs. Um, there's a big question, uh, probably from the audience, uh, whether we even need RLHF. So you saw it's a quite complicated process and do we actually even need to do all of this? Can we just maybe do the supervised fine tuning and be done with that? And I will revisit this later. Um, so there are some interesting works on that. I would say it's a future research direction, but I will keep this question open uh, until the end of the talk. It's so a little cliffhanger here and we will come back to that later. Um, so I wanted to, in, in the main part of this talk, I wanted to talk about actually using large language models, like the different ways we use large language models. And I was thinking about